Hi girls, welcome to this month's chapter meeting. Here we are, September. <laughs> we are in September. Can you even believe that? No, it's crazy. It's crazy. Time goes faster and faster all the time. It does. I often ask myself, how did that happen? How did this year pass so quickly? Some days I wish that I could throw out that sea anchor <laughs> that we talked about last <laughs> Whoa, month and slow, slow the down. days down a little bit. Yeah. yeah, for sure. We are counting down the days until Activate Her Life. Our yearly conference is coming up so quickly. And this year's theme is Stand and Occupy. And we also want to let you know that as you begin to shop for the holidays, it's a great time to remember a very Merry Cindy mm -hmm. Christmas. Please help us fill tote bags for single moms this year. If you find something that you think would bless a single mom and you want to purchase that, but it's not on the Amazon list, please do. The baskets do not need to be identical. You don't it feel... Is. Like you have to follow the Amazon list exactly. Right. Or provide 40 or 50 of one thing. Right. So right. as the Lord leads. Right? Yeah, absolutely. So this month, we remain anchored to the presence of God as we throw out anchors that will help us find security, peace, and trust when the opportunities around us offer anything but security, <laughs> peace, or trust. And in our last conversation, we discussed God's desire for us to hashtag arise protected and how we accomplish this by the guarding of our heart. And it's not that we are supposed to guard our heart after we guard the people in our life or our stuff or our reputation or our time or any of that. Scripture says that we are to guard our heart above all else. Mm -hmm. For as Proverbs 4.23 tells us, it is determines the course of our life. We want to give God permission to break us free from self-preservation so that we can become more aware of His promise and ability to cover us with His protection. Remember, we do not go to war and battle the way the culture does. The right. battleground is different when you have a kingdom identity. Mm -hmm. And now this month, hmm, this <laughs> month, as we continue our conversation, we are asking God to show us how to shake off self-gratification that comes when we allow an emotional release that can be as damaging as a storm surge that hits during an intense storm. The primary cause of a storm surge that I discovered is the relationship between the winds and the ocean's surface. The water level rises where the winds are the strongest, and then water is pushed in the direction mm -hmm. that the winds are blowing. Emotional storm surges are caused by the relationship hmm, between what's on the surface and the internal winds. And when the winds shift, a surge can hit the unsuspecting. Our emotions, if not attended to, can rise and fall just as the waves of the sea, depending on which way the wind blows, making it possible for us to release our emotions on the innocent bystander. Mm -hmm. When we are tested by windy conditions, rough waters, or we're riding the waves, the ups and downs, it's unpredictable, and we feel like we're losing control. Remember, Paul and the others had to ride out this storm. They could not control it. They had to move with it. What do we do when we are overwhelmed by a surge of emotional storms? We're going to go there, this teaching, and we're going to seek understanding as to how God uses these moments as opportunities to reveal impurities that are on the ocean floor but we miss them until the storm hits. Our verse for this month is from the book of Psalms. The psalmist says, For you have tested us, O God. You have refined us as silver is refined. The people were acknowledging that God was behind the testing and there was a purpose for his testing to refine them. This is an opportunity for us to see God's presence is in the process of refining. Refining comes through testing. And when we are in the testing, we can choose to see it as an opportunity to unleash the storm of emotion or hashtag arise refined and become more like Jesus. Mm -hmm. Amen to that. 
So a substance that has been refined is free from impurities. And we learn from the Old Testament prophet Malachi that one would come and he would be like a refiner's fire, like a launderer's soap. He will act like a refiner and a purifier of silver and will cleanse the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. And one translation says he would be a smelter, one who uses heat to draw the precious metal out of the raw ore. So let's look at silver for an example. Unrefined silver is also known as silver ore, and it typically appears when you see it to be grayish, kind of dull, dark, metallic material. It is often found mixed with other minerals and rocks and can have a rough, irregular surface. It can contain streaks of other minerals too, like copper and lead and sulfur. And it does definitely does not have that shiny, smooth appearance of a refined silver and can look quite dull and earthy. Not too attractive. Mm -hmm. Right. In order to obtain that beautiful, bright, shiny silver, it must be refined. So heat from the refiner's fire is used to purify the metal and to refine it. It's melted down using high heat that allows the unwanted materials, called the dross, to rise to the surface so it can be scooped off. And I read that the fundamental difference between the melting and the smelting is that the melting is a process in which the state of substance is changed from solid to liquid by heating it, while the smelting is the process of obtaining the pure metal from its ore by heating it to a higher temperature. Mm -hmm. I also learned this fun little fact and that silver is the most reflective metal. It goes from being the dullest and earthy having that look to becoming the most reflective metal there is. Mm -hmm. But the dross must be removed yeah. for this to be possible. Absolutely, yep. Okay, so this month then, we're also gonna look at Proverbs 17, three, which refers to a crucible. A crucible is a container used in the refining process that must be made of a substance that can withstand these high temperatures. So Proverbs 17.3 reads, The crucible is for refining silver, and the furnace is for gold. Likewise, <laughs> and here it comes. Here, here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. Yes. Likewise, the Lord tests hearts. Intense heat of the fire is used to refine silver and gold. And we are the container that houses the heart that the Lord tests for the purpose of purifying. His desire is that just like the crucible, we can withstand the heat and pressure when testing or trials come or when we face challenging experiences like our, our friends on the ship with Paul. Right, right. Can we present the dull, contaminated heart of our humanity to the process of refinement until that which flows out of us shines like Jesus? Yeah. That's what we're looking for. Yeah, I think it's also important to remember always that God pursues us and tests us not to crush and kill us. And I think sometimes mm -hmm. we can look at the trying circumstances of our lives, and when we're hit, you know, we one wave hits and another wave hits, then we assume that God is against you know, us. Against us, you mm -hmm. know, His heavy hand is upon us. But you know, that's not God's heart for any of us no. ever. No. So we have to be careful. He really is just pursuing us and testing us for the purpose of uh, extracting more and more like Jesus mm -hmm. out of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree yeah. with that. Yeah, and we can be transformed from the inside out. And as we endure this transformation, we can decide if we're going to become bitter be through it or are yeah. we going to become better because of it. And we can decide, are we going to be resentful for what we're going through or are we going to be refined yeah. by the process? Exactly. Yeah, for sure. So what happens then when the heat is turned up in the process of the Lord's refinement of our heart? We discover the quality of the container as the impurities are forced out. And in this teaching, we're going to look at the form that they can take through emotion. Our feelings that rise up and reveal the dross that God is trying to skim off of the silver. Intensity of the fire 
can reveal some pretty intense emotions, Mm -hmm. right? Absolutely can. We've all experienced it. And this is important to understand, too, here at this point, is that we should not be afraid of emotions. Emotions themselves are not the impurities, right? Exactly. They're there. God gave them to Mm -hmm. us. They're there for a purpose. God himself has emotion, and, um, and he's not afraid to show it. Right. So it's how we respond to and process these emotions that reveal the impurities that are within us. Our emotions can be much like the sea of waves that take you up one minute and crash (laughs) downward the next. Come on, we are women, and those hormones can take us from side to side, twisting and turning, upheaval, unlevel. Add a little wound to that, and we can allow them to take us to the place where we give up and let them continue to take us out into the open sea, and we become lost to them. Or we can ask God to rescue us Mm -hmm. from them and help us float a little bit steadier. Yeah, for sure. So what does it look like? I mean, as if we have to ask when, I mean, (laughs) when we we let our emotions rise and fall, how do we, how, you know, what, how do we take it from that rise and fall to allowing God to refine them? And that is that we hold on to the anchor of God's presence with the knowledge that it's He is allowing the test to make us a better version of ourselves, one that is more representative of the identity that He has given us, which is in Christ. We are a new creation, and we can behave like one. When things heat up, we can respond in a way that honors and glorifies Christ if we allow God in, and if we use these testing moments as moments of discovery. Yeah, and I think that Paul's shipwreck in Acts 27 holds a few keys for us. They were in the middle of the sea, and they had been tossed around by intense waves. They had to do something for any chance of surviving the storm. And this is the moment when the test of refining begins, when we acknowledge that we have stuff to let go of. Luke tells us that one morning they saw land, and while they did not recognize the land, They noticed a bay with a beach, and they decided to run the ship aground there if they could. They did not know where they were, but understood that this was their best option for survival. And it was an opportunity to get off that ship and out of their current situation. Before this, they had thrown the sea anchor, which was the break. Remember we talked about that last month, Mm -hmm. that sea anchor that goes down and it's a break. It doesn't stop you, but it slows down the ship. And impurities can do the same to us. They can slow us down. The decision was made at that point to release that anchor altogether. No more breaks. We are not slowing down until we make it to this land. They also released the rudder rope. But they hoisted the main sail, that big, huge main sail, and they went into the wind to make their way for the shore. Nothing but the wind and the sail was going to get them there. And that was very, very risky. It was risky. And first, as we look at the story, we see that they did not recognize the land. So. Sometimes emotions arise that we are unfamiliar with and we might not recognize them. I know for me, this has been a thing. It's for, even since my early teens, you know, I, I don't recognize emotions because I have not dealt with them. So it's something that I, I understand well. And there can be a storm brewing and not even, and you might not even know it. Emotions can be disregarded or put away for so long that you don't even realize that the battering of the waves of everyday life are taking their toll. And then all of a sudden, you've run aground. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, I have a very good story that represents this very well <laughs> from my past, which has become known as the fork incident. <laughs> and those who have heard my story before will recognize it. But um, it, was, it was a time when my, our children were, were quite young. And it was on our anniversary. I can't remember what what year it was so I can't tell you what anniversary it was but my husband was working late and it had been the kind of day that we if you have children you can recognize well as you know they just were at at each other's throats all day so we were at the dinner table and um and my frustrations had come to a head 
um, and I took a fork, I had a fork in my hand, and I slammed it down. And when I slammed it down at the table, as clear as day, I can remember it hitting the side of a plate and doing this flip. And when it landed, it landed in my son's hand. Don't even, I mean, it's freak. It's, it's surreal, the even, thing, isn't it, it? Yeah, and honest, God knows the story, and that's the story, you know, that's yeah. what happened. Um, now, as you can imagine, as things played out, the storm intensified because the, the, the fork was embedded to the point where, you know, I knew I wouldn't be able to get it out. So we called a ambulance. We went to the ER. Um, sir, CPS, of course, was asked to be part of the story. <laughs> um, the, he had to have surgery to have it removed. Um, and, of course, by the looks of it and because of the way it looked, you know, Anyone would say she stabbed him, right? Right. Um, so I was charged with assault, and so this just was. I had just found myself in this place. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, this storm that had been going on inside of me had now was now playing out in my life, and um, I just couldn't believe where I was, and and found myself just wondering how I got there. Right. Now, eventually, the assault charge was discharged. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I'm grateful for that. So from there, it just took a lot of time and a lot of work to realize some things about myself and the condition of my heart. And part of that was that I discovered that I had some unrecognized or undealt with emotions of anger in relationship with my husband that I hadn't, you know, so I had put it away, I had not dealt with it, and it had turned to resentment, and it was on its way to becoming bitterness. So it's not that anger is a bad emotion. God um, gives gives it to us, you know, as a warning sign uh, that something's not right. So the fact that I was unable or unwilling to recognize it and use it for its intended purpose landed me in this unfamiliar place. Mm. And it had built up into an internal storm that was unleashed in a way that left some serious damage in its wake. Now I can look back now so clearly see, I can so clearly see that it was a time of testing and it was a time of refining. And God brought out many things that I didn't know were there that needed to come out, right? And you yeah. remember, you were there, Yeah, you were with me. I was like, um, how you say, anger is one letter short of danger. Yeah. 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 It's really, it's... If it's not dealt with. If it's not dealt with, yeah. Yeah. Because I think anger is meant to, I mean, when things rise up in us, sure, we need to, we need to recognize it. Yeah. If we're angry about something, something is not right. Yeah. And so we need to go through a process that we're going to talk about here in a minute. Yeah. To... F to realize what that is yeah that's not right that was quite a time of testing for you and it was certainly very painful mm -hmm. in the moment testing still hurts yes <laughs> still get you but um but the lord used it for good in mm -hmm. so many ways mm -hmm. in so many ways and so next they from the story with Paul, we see that they noticed a bay with a beach, and a bay with a beach is an area of beach that is surrounded by three sides, and the energy of the waves is lower in the bay with the beach. So, what do we take notice of when our emotions begin to assault us, like waves that are just crashing over the side of our boat? We can allow the water to produce panic that leads us to give up or perhaps we notice water filling the boat so we grab a bucket and we focus only on what's incoming that water and we try to bail it out get me out of here get me out of here rather than look at around and discover where the leak is how did that get in there in the first place there's a leak somewhere but i can't even think right now about finding out where that is I'm just going to focus on what's trying to drown me. What I love about this story is that they saw this big place of land, but they didn't just say, land, let's go there. They took a minute to notice something, and they noticed the place within the land that might provide them with a safer place to run mm -hmm. aground. Mm -hmm. They might not do quite as much damage if they went there. They didn't just say, land, let's go. And if we aren't careful, we can see land and just decide we're going to go there. This emotion is rising up. It's stormy waters. I see something. I'm just going to go and I'm going to land the ship, 
right there. Regardless running, of the regardless, regardless of, the of anything else, I'm mm-hmm. running aground right here. Mm-hmm. I might plow somebody over in the drown process. Somebody. I might drown someone else, <laughs> mm-hmm. but I'm I'm going there mm-hmm. because that's what makes me feel safe and protected. And that's in control. Where, that's in where control. I'm in control. Yeah, it's the, that place where I have always responded that way. I am mm-hmm. going to just always continue to respond that way. But in the end, what we don't really look at is what it's costing us when we do that. Mm-hmm. We lose relationships. We lose peace. We can lose our reputation. We can lose the respect of others because it's not safe for others. It's only gratifying you. Mm -hmm. They decided that the bay at the beach was the best option to run aground if they could. And when I read that, that means they had a conversation about it. They decided. Mm -hmm. They decided. Mm -hmm. So they noticed the land. Mm -hmm. They looked at it. They, uh, what's the word? Um, Assessed it. They assessed the land, noticed a place that would be the safest place and they had to do that together Mm -hmm. they decided Mm -hmm. you know what's funny is in the beginning when paul said i can see this is nobody wanted to decide together then Mm -hmm. they ignored that warning Mm -hmm. but now they're deciding together Mm -hmm. that the bay at the beach is the best place to go yeah interesting and i think sometimes you know we can ask ourselves do we do we take the time to assess the situation? You know, think of the outcome of our storm we're about to unleash or, you know, this place we're about to crash into. <laughs> it's, you know. Or the person. Or the person we're, we're about, about to, to plow over. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's time to recognize the fact that God is in our bay and on the beach and at the beach that he is the safe place to land. And he's the place where we go to process to discover the root of our emotions. He's he is the one who creates the the safe place. Yeah, he's our bay at the beach. Her bay at it's he's our bay at the beach where we can um, find refuge. Yeah, yeah. There's so many uh, times throughout the Bible where you read about him being your shelter. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. the shelter, the safe place. Yeah, the safe place. Mm -hmm. And the bay at the beach was safe for them. And God is our bay at the beach. And I I have to remember that when I want to unleash on you, but I need to then ask, is that the best option for mm-hmm. me? Is that going to bring further damage or restoration? God can calm the waves of emotion and slow the intensity that they are bringing into my life right now, right in the moment. If I do the assessment Mm -hmm. if i do the work to assess it he can calm every wave of emotion he can slow me down Mm -hmm. throw that sea anchor out he is always going to be the best option to turn to and run aground on i have unleashed a fury of emotion on people because i did not recognize the storm surge was rising so now how do we prevent an emotional shipwreck first we have to ask god to help us recognize the land now here's a spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't seen the movie inside out or inside out 2 i think that the creators of the this movie have done just a fabulous job of giving us a visual image of a few of the emotions that we struggle with in the first movie we are introduced to riley and we meet her top five core emotions joy fear anger disgust and sadness These emotions live within Riley's mind, which they call the headquarters, (laughs) where they influence all of her actions. I haven't seen this movie. This sounds interesting. It's so good. And in Inside Out 2, Riley now is introduced to new emotions. There's anxiety, ennui, envy, and embarrassment. Throughout the movie, these emotions challenge Riley as she becomes conflicted by her core beliefs and her ability to navigate the social pressures of growing up. Mm -hmm. Remember we talked Mm -hmm. hormones? Mm -hmm. I was completely struck by how relatable the emotions were, as well as the emotions response in the situations. Mm -hmm. So when anxiety comes in, 
she does whatever she can to lock up joy. She's anxiety. Been, anxiety does. Anxiety, anxiety locks up joy. Locks up joy. She wants to remove her, and joy is fighting for her place. She is fighting anxiety and trying to encourage all the other emotions. To help them see that she belongs. Mm -hmm. She belongs there. Riley has always had joy in her heart. They were best friends. And now all of a sudden, these other emotions are trying to remove her, especially anxiety. Mm -hmm. Anxiety is like the captain of the ship. Joy knows that she is supposed to be there and how much of Riley's true self has been centered around her. Joy has been able to override fear anger, disgust, and sadness, but now anxiety thinks that she can just walk right in and take right over. And nostalgia, whenever nostalgia tries to come in and speak up, it's always told, go back where you came from. Mm -hmm. Go mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. Now is not the time. And embarrassment is always hiding, afraid to speak up for what he knows is right. And then there's that ennui. And when we allow that emotion to rule, we've become listless and dissatisfied, which is rising up from a lack of occupation or excitement. God can overcome your anxiety and bring joy mm -hmm, back. Mm -hmm. I know That's for cool. sure that he can. Yeah. Yeah. And if we don't allow him to, and if we, if we, uh, you know, we step into the place of allowing these other emotions to take over what we're really doing is stepping into a place of self-gratification. Yeah. And if we want to avoid a shipwreck, we gotta, we got to be able to shake off self-gratification. And that is the act of pleasing myself or of satisfying my own desires above everybody else's or above all else. When we do this, it gives our emotions permission to just run off course. And it brings us to a place where we are refusing to allow any refinement to take place. We might find ourselves saying things like, well, it's just how I am. Deal with it. Deal with it. I, I'm gonna, that's how I am. That's how I was made. It's, yep. you know, or something like, you know, I'm allowed to feel this way. I should be able to feel this way. Look what he did to me. You know, yep. and, and then finding ourselves in those places. But the truth is that we can submit our emotions and we have to. Like we can and we have to submit our emotions to the control of the Holy Spirit and therefore to God's refining process. Yeah. Jesus did not engage when he was provoked and we don't have to either. Remember when the crowd around him picked up stones and he just walked through the crowd and just kept on his way? Yeah. He didn't pick up any stones. He didn't pick up one. He didn't speak a word. And you might not recognize that ability to do that and to recognize the opportunity to uh, control that emotion that wants to retaliate. But God can show you a bay where the waves can become less commanding for sure. For sure. I have a friend and a mentor who told me about this app. It's called How We Feel. And this app uses video teachings to help us understand emotion as well as four different categories. It was funny when I was talking to them, I was telling them that I feel like I center on like the the emotions that Riley had, you know, anger, sadness. And he said that a person that is really in touch with and understands who they are is somebody who is able to go to a place where they can really express themselves through the emotion. It's not just I feel angry. Maybe I feel frustrated. Mm -hmm. Maybe I feel a little anxious. And this How We Feel app has four categories. There's high energy unpleasant. There's low energy unpleasant high energy pleasant and low energy pleasant. So you might not be angry, you might be troubled or embarrassed or irritated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You might even have FOMO, which is fear of missing out. You might feel more than good. You mm -hmm. might feel relaxed or appreciated or understood or even at ease. You might not exactly be elated but you could be thrilled, amazed, or inspired. Good words. Yeah, I know. And it's so funny because I never would think to really ever process that emotion. Yeah, to narrow in. Yeah, just to go there. It's not always easy to narrow in, but 
if we look at this ball of yarn and see that there's a red thread, God wants us to follow the thread. And this is something that I have learned to do over the course of the last few years. I've learned to, that inside of me, when an emotion hits me, and I don't know where that emotion came from. I, I'm having a hard time understanding. What he has shown me is that in the course of trying to find it and figure it out, I can pull on this thread. And I might have to go through a few things. I'm going to have to go through layers. You have to unravel some things. Yes, I got to unravel. It's a good word. I got to do that. And then it, it takes me to the next place. Oh, I can unravel this. Oh, I see where that. I see where where this intersected mm -hmm. with it's holding you back from, this emotion mm -hmm. right here i can see where they walk together but i don't know where the root of that goes so i'm just going to keep going back i'm going to keep going back until i finally can get to that point where i say oh wow mm. it all makes perfect sense now why i respond that way it's because the root was this core belief about me and it led me to this emotional place you might go back to a wound from your childhood as i have pulled the thread over the last few years this is what i've learned when i have an uncomfortable emotion i feel it rising and suddenly i want to respond in a manner that is protecting mm -hmm. me why because somewhere along the line i felt threatened something threatened me well why did you feel threatened by that comment what happened what hit you hard there well the lord showed me pull the thread a little bit farther i have trust issues why the thread led me to a core belief that my effort is never enough my efforts never good enough. That's really what a powerful illustration, and what a, it's been, and it's powerful to watch how you, you you've gotten so much quicker at that. Yeah. Like, you know, you've gotten so it gets e it's not that it gets easier, but it it's gets, more uh, recognizable. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, powerful. That's powerful, and so to avoid. Uh, shipwrecks to avoid these shipwrecks let's remember the anchor of god's presence let's ask him to help us recognize the land and show us where the bay area is where we can take our ship for safety so we can set our sail and land and um and then we learn to recognize the land we can slow down and we can take the time to ask him just like just like colleen just demonstrated for us ask us to help us figure it out what is that emotion what is that angst or the unrest that i just felt rising up inside of me when i heard that comment or when someone gave me that look where is it coming from is there a storm that's brewing inside of me that i hadn't recognized why did that comment just hit me so hard there's probably impurities hiding below the surface so what are they lord exactly show me yeah Remember that God is our bay at the beach. Where is God at work in my life right now? What area is he refining at this moment? Mm -hmm. Open the word and ask God to speak to you from his word. We have to start taking ownership of our junk. We can read books that help us grow and give us the tools to navigate these storms and the stormy emotions that want to keep us out at sea figuring out how to manage the waves. And I think also we can, when we're in these, we can see when other people are in it, when other people, you know, I can tell, I can tell, I know when you're in it, I yeah. know when you're going through it. So what do we do when we can, when we encounter someone who's been shipwrecked by their emotions? The story continues in Acts 28, where it says, after we had safely reached shore, we learned that the island was called Malta. The local inhabitants showed us extraordinary kindness before they built a fire and welcomed us all because it had started to rain and it was cold. In my reading, I discovered that if a ship runs aground, the first thing that you have to do is to stop the engine and check for injuries. If anyone is seriously injured, then there's this thing called a VHF radio 
that you contact the authorities right away and you send a distress signal to the other vessels. Mm -hmm. And as sisters in Christ, we can also be checking on each other. And if there are signs of distress, we can signal others to pray and to encourage. And if you're the one that's struggling, don't be afraid to shoot off the distress signal yourself. Absolutely. Get some help. Absolutely. Don't just say, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. Everything's fine when you're seething on the inside. We can help someone get to the bay at the beach when we seek to understand what's behind the emotion too. Speaking of stormy emotions, you, my friend, were never afraid to remain in relationship with me, even though there were many times that I unleashed my stormy surges Mm -hmm. upon you. Instead, you always led me to the bay. Now I had a choice in those moments when you were leading me to the bay. I could remove you from my life or you had a choice in those moments too. You could have said, she's too much work. I can't get her to the bay. I'm dropping her anchor and it's going to (laughs) land way out there. I'm not, I don't have it in me to Mm -hmm. keep walking this out with her. But I'm so grateful that you walked it out with me. Mm -hmm, Me too. It goes both ways. Yeah. You can always choose to remove someone when they try to lead you to the bay because you're too afraid to touch that place of pain. People know when you're not open to that moment where somebody comes in and says i see the distress signal right here Mm -hmm. and i want to lead you to the bay at the beach Mm -hmm. yeah so yeah let's calm the water that's good that's good we can do that for each other uh so and now it's time for activation plan i gotta tell you i love this activation plan yeah me too and i'm actually gonna ask you to hold me accountable to it okay okay because okay. um, I just think it's so powerful and it can be life changing. And it's kind of, I just feel like I found myself lately in some situations where I've been surprised at my lack of emotion. Mm. So, you know, so it goes back to me kind of stuffing all those things and, you know, not dealing with the thing, you yeah. know, as they came up. And I feel like it's it's caused me to be, I don't know, emotionless, like, yeah. you know, just kind of. Isn't it, um, it's kind of amazing to me how, like for me, the emotion hits and it's like, out, I got to mm-hmm. get it out. And yeah. this is how it's going to be. But for you, it's like an emotion hits and you just put a lid yeah, on I it. I can't even name it. I don't even, yeah. I mean, I don't recognize it enough to even name it. Yeah. You know, so so that's why I think this activation plan can, can be very helpful, what, whether you know, you're more of a reactor or a stuffer. So, yeah. So yeah, because I don't want to be that way anymore. I want to experience joy. I want to experience all those emotions that, you know, in from your inside out movie, you yeah. know, I want to experience all of them. I want to recognize anxiety. I want to recognize joy. I want to let joy do what it needs to do and put the rest in their place. Yeah. And yeah, so, so yeah, so here's our activation plan. If we hold fast to him through all of what we're talking about when it comes to refining by being tested first peter 1 7 says such trials show the proven character of your faith which is much more valuable than gold gold that is tested by fire even though it is passing away and will bring praise and glory and honor when jesus christ is revealed have you ever discovered your emotion through the psalms the Psalms are full of emotion. And so we're going to ask God to refine our hearts and our emotions by using the Psalms as a tool. So what we learned is that there are seven types of Psalms in the Old Testament. There's the praise Psalms, which obviously are celebratory in nature. They express adoration and worship to God. Mm-hmm. We have uh, the lamenting Psalms, which are, you know, just a way of the, where the psalmist has expressed the deepest of grief and sorrow and regret we have thanksgiving psalms uh we have royal psalms that refer to the kingship of god and um and and all that that entails wisdom psalms uh, something called imprecatory psalms which are the psalms uh, where the psalmist is just call is calling down judgment destruction and god's anger on his enemies 
they are there and you yeah. can read them um and then we have penitential psalms which are psalms of confession where the where the psalmist is recognizing his need for god's forgiveness and for god's favor they're just so rich there's such an extreme pendulum Yes. of emotions in the psalms and i th- we so with, we want you to spend some time in those psalms yeah. yeah and when you're experiencing an emotion go to the psalms and say okay god hit, hit me with your best shot here mm-hmm. take me to the <laughs> psalm that's gonna speak to me right now and bring your presence <laughs> into it mm-hmm. i heard someone say once that the psalms always start out with the emotion of it but they go through it's like the process of going through it's like the red thread yeah there's my here's my emotion here's where i'm at the moment and Mm -hmm. then at by the end of the psalm they've always come back to the place where they found god the bay at the beach amen right yeah right and so we also want to ask you to download the how you feel app and create a notebook and do a check-in with the app every morning and in your notebook Write the emotion you are feeling that you felt. What led you there? What was unfamiliar to you about it? What was uncomfortable about that emotion? Yeah, and take then take those take those emotions that that um, you know that you've written down that you've that you've pinpointed that you've put in your notebook, and then ask God to take you to a psalm where He can help you to express mm. your emotion and write it out in a prayer of your own. You can ride the waves of this emotion until God is able to reveal his refining power with it and allow him to remove the dross. And this, girls, is how we are going to hashtag arise refined. And not be afraid of it. Right. No more. We're not going to be afraid of the refining. So have a great discussion, girls. And we will see you next month.